Hello. Today we're going to have uh, two professional pawpaw grafters joining us out here in our pawpaw orchard at Piketon, Ohio. We're here at the South Centers. Uh, the weather hasn't been very cooperative with us. We had uh, May weather in April and April weather in May. So when we were uh, scheduling our pawpaw grafting uh, video for today, Usually by the middle of May, we're getting the high temperatures and the good weather conditions, and that has flip-flop on us. But we're going to go ahead and proceed with a, uh, with a demonstration today on grafting pawpaw. And like I mentioned, we have uh, Dr. Ron Powell, who's the president of the Ohio Pawpaw Growers Association, and Sarah Francino, who you all are familiar with. Uh, she was our master's student uh, for a couple years, working with the farmers throughout Ohio, and she's now working on her PhD in pawpaw production. So they're gonna be sharing with us today some of the skills, some of the tools, and some of the things we need to keep in mind when we go to graft our pawpaws. Howdy guys, I'm Sarah Francino, and we're gonna talk about the toolkit of grafting pawpaws. We are using Ron Powell's very large grafting toolbox. You don't need one this size, but having all of your tools in one spot so you don't forget anything is a good idea. First off, let's talk about grafting knives. So we're looking at different grafting knives here, comparing them to a, different, to a pocket knife. So a pocket knife is double-sided, so it's not straight on either side, and it comes to a point. Whereas a grafting knife is flat on one side so you can make nice straight cuts. And there's different types. There, this is the traditional fold out. Some are, blades are curved like this, but they're, again, they're flat on one side. And then you have grafting knives that can be a little bit bigger and they're for nicer for bigger hands, but they're again, flat on one side so we can make that nice cut. And you need to make sure that they're very, very sharp each time that you use them to graft. Some people also use razors or scalpel blades. They can be very sharp and they only last a few uses. You also need a set of sharp pruners to cut off the top of the tree, which is probably the hardest part of grafting is beheading the tree. Always make sure to label your tree. Ron uses a pencil because it doesn't wash away like marker does. Marker usually lasts about three to four years, but on top of labeling, you also want to make a map of your orchard. Then coming to after you've done the grafting, one of the first steps is to uh, put a rubber around it. These come in multiple different sizes and if you're, it will depend on the size of the tree and the graft. We usually use small to medium rubbers here. And you'll also want parafilm. There is also things like budding tape, um, but a low budget option is just to cut strips of parafilm about a quarter inch wide, and then that will stretch out to about a foot. Because grafting is like doing surgery, you wanna make sure that you also have spray bottles of alcohol to spray all of your tools down. This is, we wanna make sure we have an antiseptic environment, that it's all clean so that when we do the graft that it will take and there won't be any bacterial or fungal infections. And last off, you need to protect yourself because grafting is done with very sharp knives. And I always cut myself on my finger. So either use a Band-Aid to put on your finger where you're going to be cutting into. This is not the Boy Scouts like Ron always says. We are going to be cutting towards our hands, so make sure to protect yourself. And now we're going to move on to actually doing a graft on a pawpaw tree. First, let's talk about the scion wood for a second. This is how a professional packs his scion wood. You wanna make sure that it has enough moisture in there, but it's not too moist so it gets moldy or anything. So Ron wraps it up in a paper towel. And then you keep it in a plastic bag in the fridge. And each stick, I might have to unwrap this, because it's nice and tightly packed. You need to make sure that they stay nice and moist. And this is a still, which is a lesser known cultivar that we're going to be grafting in to our orchard today. And each stick is second, is first year wood, correct? Yeah. And then Ron seals them with wax on the bottom so the moisture will stay in. And you can see then each of 
these is a bud. And so you want about three to four buds per graft. Last year, we had a very interesting growing season. So our buds are very close together. So we'll be, it might be a shorter scion this year, but some years you'll have a longer scion. Just depends on the year you wanna count three or four buds. You wanna make sure you store your scion wood in a cooler or in some sort of cool space in a dark space when you're out in the field. Today is kind of gloomy, but if you're, you're supposed to be grafting in nice sunny degree, uh, 80 degree weather, so you wanna make sure that it stays cool and moist. So we picked out our pawpaw tree here. This is a three year old uh, seedling that's ungrafted. We'll be using the variety K wood today, which is a lesser known variety. So first we want to look at the tree here and determine where we want the graft. We've got the cyan wood and we wanna match it up. Now, this is not going to be a perfect matchup. The cyan wood's a little small. So we're gonna graft right in here. This is about the right diameter and we can ma match up those cambiums really well. So the first thing we wanna do is prep our rootstock. You wanna take alcohol and disinfect your nippers and then you want to cut as close as possible to the sides of these lower branches and take them off because we don't want the rootstock pushing up vegetative growth and then you want to make a flat cut across the top of the rootstock And see how we made that very, very flat? The green is the phloem. And right between the green, which is the phloem, and the center, which is the xylem, and that's the wood, is the cambium. And that's what we need to shoot for. We need to shoot for the cambium of the scion to, inter to go past the cambium of the root stalk. We will be doing a cleft graft today. Next, we're gonna prep our cyan wood. So you can see here, there's flower buds, and then there are smaller leaf buds. You wanna take only the flower buds off, which look like chocolate bonbons, and you wanna leave the leaf buds on there. This is because we don't want the scion, which is off of an older tree, to flower in its first year. As much as you want fruit, you need to wait three or four years before you leave flowers on your trees. To graft, we want f about four buds, but we don't wanna cut the scion right there. We wanna cut it down a little farther. Give yourself about an inch or two, depending on how experienced you are. I'm, this is one of my first grafts this year, so we're going to be giving my, I'll be giving myself a little bit of extra room to make sure if I make just a small mistake that I can go back and fix that with a little bit more length. So next, we're going to cut the scion. Right about here. And then you want to make sure that you put the other piece of scion, which you can use for another graft, back into your cooler. to keep it nice and cool. Then you want to disinfect your knife. And place your thumb on top of the scion and you want to you want to cut a wedge. And this is important that you have either a right or a left-handed grafting knife because if you're right-handed, the flat side of the blade needs to be up against the scion. And if you're left-handed, then that would work the same way, but with a left-handed knife. So we're gonna cut a wedge. And this scion one is a little small. 
a little hard to do. Okay, uh, you wanna make sure that it tapers into a nice point and you wanna make sure you have that green flowing with the cambium. Now I'm gonna stick this in my mouth to keep the scion moist and to not let more uh, fungal or bacterial get into it. And we're gonna prep the rootstock. So you only wanna cut down as far as your scion is And then you want to stick your scion into the rootstock. Close your knife. You're going to take a rubber. And this is where repetition helps because you're supposed to start the rubber off at the bottom and cross it back over and start winding it around. And this is where each person develops their own little technique and method to make sure that this scion is wedged in there nice and right. You wanna make sure while you can shimmy it back and forth that you line up that cambium. Okay, and we're getting to the top. You want to put your finger in, tie this off. The top, and that will, will keep the that cleft that we cut in the rootstock pinched together against the scion. Next, we want to seal both the rootstock and the scion from any outside weather forces with some parafilm that we talked about earlier. Now, this stuff is very, very stretchy. So you need one piece, you stretch it out and it seals to itself. So you have to be a little careful. Start with the bottom, roll your way up. and you wanna make sure it seals over top of that graft right there. You wanna make sure it seals all the way over the top of the, the rootstock and that you're overlapping it on the scion. And then you roll it all the way up the scion. You don't have to worry about the buds breaking through the parafilm because it's thin enough and the parafilm is biodegradable. Then you want to, after you get it to the top, you want to bring it back down around and seal it off here at the bottom. So we have first cut the scion wood, made it into a wedge. Then we've cut the cleft graft in the rootstock, sealed it with a rubber to keep it tight pinched against each other, then sealed the whole process with parafilm. The leaves should start pushing out of the parafilm in about two to four weeks, depending on the weather. In six months, you take off the rubber and any parafilm that's left. You might want to put a, either some extra stick of pawpaw or a tea post or even something like uh, bamboo or th just something to, uh, to tie this to because birds like to come sit on top of new grafts 
and they will then hurt them and tip them over.